Well, we're going live now to Detroit, Michigan, where Donald Trump, Republican presidential candidate, is having his last and final rally ahead of the U.S. presidential election later today. Take a look. Thank you very much. This is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Think of it. This is it. This is the last one that we're going to have to do. And doing four of these in one day is a little difficult, but not really, because the love in every one of them has been incredible, just like this. So it makes it a lot easier. And I want to say a very special hello to Grand Rapids. It's been a special place. Remember, 2016, we were... We were given a 3% chance. You remember we came to Grand Rapids, I said, how the hell are we going to lose? It was just like this. And I said, how are we going to lose? We're not going to lose. And it was a 3% chance. And then we won a little place called Florida and it went to a, about a 7% chance. And then it went to an 11%. And then it went to 17%. You remember? And, went that way, and then it went to about a 62% chance. And they had somebody in there going totally crazy. The woman, she became a fan. She was going crazy. Not on our side, on the other side. She was going crazy. But uh, we're uh, in very good shape. I have to tell you, we're way up in terms of the vote. You know, the Republicans are never up there. And I don't want to talk too much about it because I really want you to, I really want you to just assume that it's sort of even and you're going to turn out tomorrow and we're going to blow this thing away because, you know, we're leading, we're leading going in by hundreds of thousands of votes, but just pretend we're tied or losing by a little bit because we want to put on a display tomorrow of unity and everything, the progress that this party has made is incredible. It's very inclusive. It's inclusive of everybody, including our great mayor right back there. That's a great, that is a great mayor and who came through for us. But I just want to, I want to thank everybody and a very special hello to Michigan. We're going to do some great things from Michigan. We're going to bring the car business blazing back. You're not going to remember what it was like. We're going to we're going to make Detroit we're going to make Detroit greater than it ever was. You know, I've been hearing about Detroit for a long time. They've been talking about that miracle of Detroit. Well, I mean, look, we got to be honest. Hasn't happened, but it's going to happen now. It's going to happen, and at levels that you never dreamt possible. So for you, for the auto workers who have been so incredible. You've been so incredible. You're going to be uh, you're going to be very happy with the things we're doing. We killed the plant, as you know, in Mexico. The biggest plant in the world was going to be built in Mexico, and I absolutely killed. It. But I'd like to begin by asking a question: Are you better off now than you were four years ago? Because over the past four years, Americans have suffered one catastrophic failure, betrayal, and humiliation after another. Kamala has delivered soaring prices and true economic anguish at home, war and chaos abroad, and a nation destroying invasion on our southern border, invasion of some of the greatest criminals in the world that are pouring into our country. And we're not going to take that. We're going to end that, like, immediately. And I happen to think it's bigger than the economy. And I think, you know, every poll shows the economy and inflation and then the border and the horrible things that are going on. And I don't agree with it. I think we have to focus on all of it. We do it all one time. But to me, when you allow 
thousands of murderers into our country. To me, when you allowed the drug kingpins of the world into our and terrorists into our country at levels that we've never seen before, to me, that's the bigger problem. We're going to solve it all, but that's the bigger problem. And we're going to have it taken care of very quickly. But my message to you and to all Americans tonight is very simple. We do not have to live this way. We don't have to live this way. We're not living good. Four years, what did they do that was good? Can you name one thing? I said to a group of people, I said to a group of people, what have they done? Everything's a disaster, including nobody even knows how to. Supposing President Xi of China wanted to call to ask a little question about war or Taiwan or anything. Who the hell does he call? We got a little problem in America. There's nobody to call. You know, they'll probably end up calling me. Maybe they'll call me. But, you know, but who do you call? And remember, they ripped that presidency away from Joe Biden. Say what you want. We're not fans of Joe Biden. You know, I spent $150 million on him. We did, went through the convention. We never mentioned Kamala. Nobody knew who the hell she was. And all of a sudden, they picked Kamala, even though she was in last place. She came in number 13. They had 12 plus Kamala. She was considered the 13th. But then they wanted to be politically correct, so they picked Kamala. And they called her Harris. And nobody knew who Harris was. Like, call Harris. Who's Harris? Weird. You know, it's a very nice name, but it's a strange name because nobody knows who she is as her, so we have to call her Kamala. But uh, she was the least popular. She got no votes. She lost in the primaries to Joe Biden and everybody else. She was the first one out. She quit the first one, 22 people. She left. She never made it to the great state of Iowa. Never made it. And uh, now we're running against her. But she's been exposed, you know, she's been exposed. She's a radical left lunatic who destroyed San Francisco. But we don't have to settle for weakness and incompetence and decline and decay. <laughs> That's a nice word, decay. That's what's happened. That's a nice word, decay. Can you imagine? And nobody will question it because it's true. With your vote tomorrow, we can fix every single problem our country faces and lead America and lead the world to new heights of glory. But indeed, think of that statement, how beautiful that is. New heights of glory, that's what's going to happen. When we win the election and we're really well, look, it, the ball's in our hand. All we have to do is get out the vote tomorrow. You get out the vote, they can't do anything about it, we win. One of their top people just got on television. I was coming in, and uh, they said, uh, these are not looking good, these numbers for them. This is very troubling. <laughs> At least he was honest. No, all we have to do, we, if we get out our people, it's over. There's nothing they can do about it. It's nice when you have that, right? You know? In other words, to make you feel a little guilty, we would only have you to blame. <laughs> but we put ourselves in an unusual position. Never happened for, never happened where we're leading by hundreds of thousands of votes in the early stage vote. That's never happened before. We've always been losing by sometimes millions of votes. And, you know, you keep catching them on Tuesday, but uh, Tuesday comes along and you make it, or you don't quite make it, you're a little short. And then they cheat, and it makes it a little tougher. Because when you know, when you have open borders, transgender everything, high taxes, very high taxes, they're campaigning on the fact that they're going to raise everybody's taxes. And you have men playing in women's sports. You have to cheat. Who the hell is going to approve that stuff? Who's going to approve open borders with criminals pouring into our country by the millions? No, they have to cheat. They have to cheat, and they do, and they do it very well, actually. But I think we're in very good shape. We just have to share. You show up, and you're going to have the biggest victory. You know what? This will be the single greatest 
victory, politically speaking, in the history of our country. And when we win the election, only one day from now, do you know how that sounds? I started off saying, and when we win the election four years from now, that was terrible. That was so depressing when we win the election four years from now. Then I said three years and two years and one year. Then I said six months and I said, ooh, that's starting to get a little close. And then I said five, four, three, two, one month. And then about three weeks ago, when we win the election in 21 days, it just seemed very far away. And now I say when we win the election tomorrow, can you believe that? And what we've done, and this is a sad occasion in certain ways, because I think we did like 930 rallies from the very beginning. That's a lot of rallies. And, and you know, I remember, if you make one slip up, and, you know, I'm a person, as you probably noticed, I have this beautiful speech. I haven't really even gotten to it yet. One of these... One of these moments, I'll start giving you some beautiful things to listen to and some, and honestly, some terrible things to listen to. Terrible. What's happened, what they've done to our country is horrible. Horrible. But, and by the way, don't you like a president that doesn't need to use a teleprompter? Isn't there something refreshing? But I think I heard somebody say it's like 900, maybe a little more than 900 rallies. And, you know, rarely do they ever catch me making even a little mistake. I go through rally after rally, 10, 20, 30, and then I say the wrong. They say, he's cognitively impaired. No, we're not. I'll let you know when that time happens. It could happen, but hopefully it's not going to be for a long time. He pronounced the word, he slurred the word, and I hate to go back, you know? A lot of guys, they'll be talking and they'll make a mistake. Uh, Excuse me, uh, let me go back. When you do that, it's over for a good speech. You can't do that. You just have to blaze through it and hope that they didn't hear the mistake. (laughs) Now, when Winston Churchill, who's a great speaker, he was actually a stutterer, a tremendous stutterer, and he became one of the greatest orators. But when Winston Churchill made a mistake, he didn't go, uh, excuse me, and go back. He just blazed through it. But if I do it, they say, he's cognitively impaired. There's something wrong with him. These people are sick. Those people, look at them. Ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. But uh, this has been an incredible journey. It's very sad in a way because, you know, we've done all these. And this is the last one. But here's the good news. All we were doing is putting ourselves in a position to win, which we can do tomorrow very easily if we show up. Just so you know, if we show up, they can't win. They can't. They mathematically can't win because they're so far behind. If you don't show up, I guess, but here's the one thing I will say, show up anyway, but they have no enthusiasm. She had a rally today. She couldn't have had more than 100 people there. (laughs) And I had all four stadiums were full, but she had a rally, and she was screaming, we're going to win, we're going to win, and they wouldn't follow her. They wouldn't say it. Did you see that clip? I'd like to put it up. The problem is I don't put up too many clips. I have the most beautiful clips. The problem is the press won't follow them. I had a friend. Yeah, I had a friend a couple of weeks ago. We made these gorgeous clips, and actually gorgeous in one way, but horrible in another, showing the death of children and all the damage that they've caused with the open border. And all they have to do is take those cameras. Look at all those cameras. Oh, 
And all they have to do is move them like an inch over and an inch up. I have often times. Well, not too many. I have often times screens right behind me. All they have to do is just move it up two inches like this. And they don't do it because they're fake news. They don't want to show what's on the screen. So show. So I don't. So I, I'm having a modestly good hair day. Look at that. Look. Modestly. Not the best. I'm not thrilled. But it is what it is. No, it's great. But what I do see behind me are beautiful people, great workers, people that are proud and they love our country. That's what I really see. Nice. Beautiful. So it puts us, assuming we can win tomorrow, which I think we should be able to do pretty easily, it's in our hands, right? It's in our hands. It's totally in our hands. Oh, it's today. Oh, it's today. Today, wow. Can you imagine a crowd like this at like one o'clock or some ridiculous time in the morning? On a, on a Monday slash Tuesday, right? Think of that. What a compliment. And it is true, she had nobody at these rallies. That's, you know, that's a poll. Look, Mr. Wall, look at Mr. Wall over there. This guy. It was always my ambition to buy a suit like that and wear it one time. Well, I came in in a sanitation uniform last week, and that worked out pretty good. Because Joe Biden, in one of his crazy moments, said that we were all garbage. But they shut him down. They took the election away. They walked in and they said, uh, you're not running anymore. You're out. Can you believe? They stole the election from a president. They stole the Can you imagine that? They said, you're not, you know, they use the word coup. I, I think it's worse than a coup in a sense, because a coup, there's a little back and forth. They said, Joe, you're out. That crazy, horrible human being, Nancy Pelosi, who cheats like hell. She sold. She sold. You know what she said last night? She said, and, and there's another guy, the guy. How do you explain that guy? They say, well, we'll get ready to start impeaching him. Now, how bad, how bad are people like that? They're just trouble for our country. They're bad, sick people. They took two impeachments and they wasted all that time and money and energy when we should be focusing on making America great again. They're horrible people. I mean, Nancy Pelosi started with nothing. She's worth $200 million. You know, she sold, she had a big position in Visa, and she sold it. And the day after she sold it, the Justice Department announced that they were under this massive investigation. You're a stock guy, right? They're under a massive investigation, so I don't know what happened, but I don't imagine the stock went up. History would tell you the stock went down. Did it go down a lot? It went down a lot. So they have this big position. She sells her stock. Hours after she sells her stock, they announce that Visa is under massive investigation. The stock goes tumbling down. She's a crooked person. She's a bad person. Evil. She's an evil, sick, crazy. Oh, no. It starts with a B, but I won't say it. I want to say it. I want to say it, but Franklin Graham said, sir, I love your speaking ability, and I love your storytelling. But honestly, it would be even better if you wouldn't use foul language. And I don't use much, you know, every once in a while.